Greetings and welcome back to yet another episode of After Plus Law modding tutorials and in today's video I'm gonna show you how to add new custom curses to the game. This mod was taken as an example out of the workshop and was published by someone at Nicholas so I thought that again this would be a good way to show you how to do these things appropriately and properly without any hackish way to go about it. So with that said how do we actually make curses? So if you go in our main mod folder and open up the content folder in there you'll find the curses.xml. And in the cursors.xml, thankfully this XML is very simple, so no weird attributes, no weird functions or anything. The only thing we have to put is the R curse and the curse name. In this case, we're adding a new curse called Curse of the Spider. And what this curse does is just spawns a spider at our feet every 60 seconds. Now, if that isn't a curse, then I don't know what it is. Uh, and when we when we actually create our XML and put it in our content folder, that's actually it for, for that. So the next thing we have to do is go in our code and check how to actually apply the curse. So again, you can see that we have quite a f quite some code here that's new to us that we haven't seen before, but I'll try to explain it my best. So the first thing we do is register our mod, obviously save the variable, and the second thing we do is get curse ID by name. So this is very similar and akin to functions that we used before, get cart ID by name, get item ID by name, get trinket ID by name, etc. Just that we're actually getting the curse ID. And obviously there's a lot of curses in the game at this point, and we're just adding a new one, so we have to know which ID of that curse is, so we know how to reference it later in the code. I would focus on the callbacks again as the f our first point of interest, just because we're adding a new callback here, which is called MC Post Curse Evaluation. And what happens every time every time you start a game or go on a new floor, your game determ determines which curses you're gonna get. And when the game determines which curses you're gonna get, then this callback is called MC Post Curse Evaluation. So after the game has added its own curses, then this function, in this case, post curse evaluation is gonna be called because we tied this function to that callback. So that means that every time we are th this update happens, we will be getting an information in the parameter curses about which curses have been applied so far and also which curses are actually available to us. And, and when we actually do this, what we have to do is we have to return to the game back our own curse. So that sounds kind of odd, but essentially what happens again, you get a binary string, string of digits, much like flags, like in one of my previous videos that explained how to add tear effects. Uh, if you imagine a number being only if one and zeros, and let's say it has seven digits, if the third digit was one and all of the rest were zero, that means that the curse that corresponds with the digit three will be enabled and all of the other curses will be disabled. So for that reason, you can see that we're using something that's called bit shift operators in this case to actually get our curse going. In this case, what I say, if mat.random is less than 0 0.5, and if it is, that means that we're applying our own curse in this case, and if it isn't, then we're just returning the original curses that have been applied to the game and giving the back to the game to actually apply and do things with. So essentially what we're saying, there's a 50% chance that we'll add our own curse to the mix, and there's a 50% chance that nothing will happen and our curse won't get added. With this code, it's actually possible to get two curses at once, so either one of the curses that exist in the game and as well as the curse that we added. But if you kind of imagine how this particular thing works, we get our curse ID, which is, for example, eight. Let's say that there are seven curses in the game and we added our own, which is eight. And then we shift it, by eight spaces. This is what this operator does. Essentially, it shifts one by eight spaces to the left. So that means that if you imagine a binary digit, let's say that we had just zeros, then that one is going to be on the eighth place. And that corresponds to the game that the eighth digit is actually enabled, which means that our curse is enabled. And then what we do, we take the existing curses and do an OR operation add. So let's say that we have the third and the eighth digit at one, so the curses has the third digit at one and all of the rest are zeros and this operation returned a number which has the eighth digit at one and all the rest are zero and then we combine them in an OR operation which means that all ones become ones and all zeros become zeros. And essentially now what would happen, we would have the eighth and the third digit at one which means both curses would be active. If you just wanted to play our own curse and just ignored all of the rest, what you would do is just delete the left side of this and now at this point we would just say, okay, now we're adding our own curse and if our curse doesn't get added, then we're just returning the curses that exist now. So essentially this means that there's a 50% chance that we add our curse on top of whatever exists in the game. Okay, now that we've actually applied the curse and told the game that our curse is applied, now we have to check whatever that curse actually exists in the game. And we do this in the post update function. Essentially, again, we call this function every single post update, which again happens about every frame. First of all, we check, uh, we get the game parameter or the game object. And of course, we check if the game is even initialized, because if the game isn't initialized, 
curses can exist because we're not even in the game anymore. And then we get the curses and we get that by saying game, get level, get curses. And this is going to give us that binary digit, digits of sorts, uh, which has ones, ones and zeros and it's going to tell us if we have each of particular curse enabled. And in this case, we're going to do the same thing we did again. We're just going to shift one by curse ID so we actually get the eighth spot and then we're going to do a bitwise end operation. Again, this is something that seems quite odd, but essentially what this end operation does is compares the existing curses that exist in the game and comparing them if we have our eighth curse in the game. So essentially, let's say that if our ID curse was enabled, so I, our eighth digit was enabled, and then we compare it with the eighth digit, if they're both one, that means our curse is enabled, which means that this will resolve to true, and then we will start executing this code. But if our curse ID uh, wasn't enabled, this means this would be still be 1, but this would be 0, because at this point our 8 digit is 0, and this the result of this operation would be 0, which means that this would be true, or false, sorry, because 0 is not equal to 0, which means it's false, and then this block wouldn't actually trigger. So essentially what this if does is just checks if this particular function has set the 8th digit of the curse, which is our own curse, to true, which means that our curse is actually enabled. And if that curse is enabled, then we actually start performing the logic of the curse. So essentially, if you don't really want to worry about what all of this does, and maybe you don't understand bis shift operations and digits, etc., all you have to worry about is that this is the if statement that checks whatever th your curse has been enabled. And this is essentially what you do uh, in every single code or what you would do if you wanted to check if a curse was enabled. So now that we have that done, what this does is just gets the frame count of Isaac and then on every 60th frame, basically we divided every frame by 60 and whatever that frame count is divisible by 60, that would resolve to true and then we would spawn a spider at as Isaac's feet. So in this situation you can imagine that this is quite quite a nasty curse because it spawns a spider every second and they're quite hard to deal with. In some cases probably impossible, but that's why it's a curse. So let's jump into the game, I'm gonna showcase you how this actually works. Welcome to the game, and I actually restarted so many times until I got a curse that isn't just Curse of the Spiders. In this case, what I got is Curse of the Lost alongside with the Curse of the Spiders, so you can see that we have both the spiders spawning and the map is actually invisible. And what we do if I just restart a bunch of times again, you can see that in some cases we're just gonna get Curse of the Spider, in some cases we're just not gonna get anything, in some cases we're just gonna get a different curse which is not Curse of the Spider, and then again there's that last option where we just get a curse, just as a curse that exists already in the game without Curse of the Spider. So there, there's quite a lot of things there to actually consider and if you actually wanted to implement it that way where you can only add this new curse and not have it like replace or add to any other curse then you would have to do some thinking and obviously some mental gymnastics. If you really try hard enough I I'm sure you can do it but of course if you want to know how to do that then just drop me a message and I'll try to help you out the best I can. We've arrived at the end of this video as well, and it took quite longer than I expected it would, and mostly because I was trying to explain the bit flags and the bit notions and things like that. And if you have no idea what I mean when I say binary digits, or maybe you don't understand the concepts of bit flags, and the explanation in this video wasn't enough, please leave me a comment telling me that you would like an additional explanation, and if there's enough of you actually will consider making a separate video where I explain just those things in general. Because this concept has actually come up twice at this point, and I feel that it will show up again in the future. And if you're actually trying to make your own things and actually trying to apply these things in practice, I think it's a good idea for you to know this. And if you would like to know more, like I said, please let me know and I will consider explaining it to you. Or I say, like I said, either making a new video, just explaining those things in general. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope to see you next time.